Okay, I've been asked a question on one of the affinity forums on Facebook. Somebody was saying that in Inkscape, Inkscape they were doing a pattern, for example, you know, let me just draw a pattern. So they, they went and did a pattern, they showed a pattern in, in the goodie, and then they had a, let's put the shape as a cog here, and let's choose a star. Okay, I'm going to just color this so we can see these things. We make that blue. So they had two shapes, and in Inkscape they could say, take the shape and put it along this path, and it will go along the path. And then they wanted to know, can we do it in Affinity? Um, I thought about it. There's no tool that I'm aware of that can do that. But then I thought, why can't we, you know, Affinity is so flexible, why can't we have a workaround? Now, I've got to just have some sort of um, disclaimers that when when you're doing a shape, preferably you go in and you do not have the shape join up with each other. You can pretty much zoom in and go as close as you need to, but don't let them touch. The reason why you shouldn't let them touch is because when they touch and you then do put a text tool on that curve, which is something we do always when we're designing, put if you want to type on a curve, you create a path and then you use the, the artistic tool and click there and then you can type. If, if it's a joint curve, if it joins up totally, it has special handles on there to move the text around and everything. So as soon as you join it, it's going to complicate matters for how you want to do this technique. Because this, this is literally a workaround. So I'm showing you a workaround. So rather don't let them join up. Uh, keep it separate and for the human eye we're not going to see this black line at all it's just going to be a curve in any case um, so pretty much what what I thought we could do is click on there go to the text tool which is the artistic text tool if you hover over here you can see there it wants to type in some text I click on there and there you can see the little flashing cursor and I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on but to the point I mentioned earlier, can you see this, this green and this red triangle? This means green, it starts and it will go all around and stop by this red tri triangle. So I can move the triangle here and it will only come up until this point and then it will behave quite differently. Okay, so I rather just prefer not having the curve join each other for, since this is kind of a, a workaround. Okay, so usually we would go and start typing text on here and the text will follow the curve, okay? So so that's a norm. I think we probably all would know how to do that. Create the curve, put the text on it and start typing and it will follow the curve. But here's where the technique comes in now. What I'm going to do is literally take that letter. Well, before I do that, I'm going to just select a object, maybe make this a bit smaller select this object and copy it so right click and copy and then I can come double click on here and select this letter so I'm going to select this and paste what I have in the clipboard over there now we're working with text here but text is just a vector object so it's going to replace one vector object with the other and that's where uh, the workaround happens I'm going to go control V and there we have it Okay, and you notice that the star has been placed with an offset from the line. Um, now, the brilliance of this kind of workaround is the fact that, according to the program, that star and the letter we had, the letter A we had on there, is treated as the same. They both are vectors that it's just referencing. So, if I wanted to move this star in relation to the path, I would have to ask myself, could I do that with a text, uh, the normal text that I had on? And the answer is yes. Because of the context menu up here, uh, one of the things are baseline. Okay, so if I go here now and I select that and I go to baseline, when I move this, it moves it in relation to the baseline. So I can move the, the star back and forward. So I can move it maybe just to be nicely touching on the path itself. Okay, so. Even though this is a workaround, we now have all the flexibility of character editing brought into this kind of environment. 
okay not all the features will apply to like a star because you know fonts are, are kind of different in how they've got to be spaced and um, character these uh, images might be shaped quite this one's round this one's got points so they they'll react differently but I think you get the point of um, how these other features work including we can open up the character panel and increase the spacing between the kerning and all that because the program is treating this object this star like a piece of text or a letter eh? because they are both uh, literally uh, vectors okay but now here's the thing is so if I select this and I go control copy that's control C and then I just take my cursor off here just place next to it and I go control V control V control V can you see what's starting to happen? It's starting to paste it all along the curve. Okay. But you, you'll notice that this one is touching and those ones a bit off the curve. So, you know, we can kind of select them and do moves and all that, but that's not the purpose of uh, um, this little video. This video is just to show you the thinking behind using like abstracts. Um, a set of tools and, and creating what you want. The challenge here is, is if I want to change the color of all of these things I'll have to select them all and change them. So what I recommend is before you even start putting these things on here I'm going to just go back and just leave one of them there as a reference so that we know where the curve is. What I would suggest is you come in and you create a symbol of the different objects. And a symbol, what a symbol does is once you create a symbol for those people who work in 3D space, it's like almost a you're creating a the original with the parent, and then you create from that you create instances. So when you change the original, all the instances change, um, and then you could also make that one of the instances become detached from the whole lot of them. So you could create unique things, but that's a uh, subject for another day. Um, if you're not familiar with um, symbols. You can go look up one or two tutorials online. There's some, some good ones out there. But this is the symbol um, tag here. Okay, if you don't see it visible, you just go to your view, go to studio, and just make sure that it's checked there, uh, symbols. But it might not appear here in this tab. It might appear on top or on the left, depending on where it was last docked or where the default uh, docking setup is. So I've got this selected, and I go in here and I say create. And there we have a symbol. Remember when you're creating a symbol just make sure that whatever you're selecting is first grouped together if they're made up of different components. If you don't group them together when you create a symbol each individual part will kind of populate here uh, as individual symbols. So I'm going to go to the cog say create so I have those two okay and then I'm going to right click on here and just call this a star so that we don't confuse it. Not that we can with such uh, different shapes, but we'll go to cog over there. So I've got those two shapes. Now these are both um, symbols and I'll show you why we want to do it as a symbol. Um, I'm going to take this object. I'm going to just keep all down and drag one here. Now this is on the path, but if you've noticed this one, is not part of the symbols. I did this before I created the symbol. Now to edit the symbol you're going to double click on on the symbol itself. Look what's going to happen. When I double click here I'm going to enter the symbol. When I modify this only this one will change but not that one because that's not a part of this. So double click there. When I change can you see that? Okay so that's the power of creating a symbol. Okay so I'm going to go in here let me see if I can select this. Um, I'm going to see now, here's the challenge that I've got to get to. Ah, there we go. I was wondering where the, the curve was. So let me, for me to edit on this now, I can't choose the, the move tool because it will grab it independently. I've got to go back almost to the text tool um, to get back on this line and to make that selection okay so because it's still seeing it as a text okay so I'm selecting that um, uh, before I do that let me go here and say control C copy it come back here go to the text uh, where are we just go on to the layer the 
area and then I've got text and then select it okay so using this this text area is just to get back on the path and make that selection so I've got that selected and in memory on the clipboard I've got this symbol now so I'm going to go control V and this is now the symbol now if I look at that the uh, the shape is not too nice but I know that is just a link to the symbol so how can I correct that I can double click this shape it nicely and there we go okay I'm going to just delete this one because that was used for an example so now I can go there go control C to copy and get back in this yeah get back onto the line and I'm going to go control V to paste control V so I'm just doing control V to paste now and it's pasting all along this area okay so that's basically the the kind of work around that that we're dealing with here so if I want to change all of these stars because they're all linked to this symbol I can double click the symbol to activate it I can change the color and then everything else will change okay so that is why I think the system will work and why we should choose symbols um, I'm not too sure if you could replace one symbol with another one um, you know like kind of swapped it out um, I'll have a look at that sometime later so this is how we can get things to go along the curve and because it's still been treated like text we can go onto the curve area uh, pop out the let's see if we got the character tool okay so the character tools are used for text but let me just disconnect it but because we are working and the program interprets it as text let's see if it will allow us to do modifications here and shift stuff around so here we're going to go with the tracking if we just yeah there we go okay so if I go in there and put 50% can you see it's moving you scroll okay so what it's doing is interpreting it that it's a kind of text it's a font that it's using in there but we've replaced it with uh, these uh, symbols and you could possibly get things aligned along this area now you can see that there's you know some of the areas where the where it goes around that they're not spaced properly and so forth so yeah maybe um, it's not going to give you the total perfect solution but I think it gives you an idea of the direction that you can find yourself going in okay so let me just go and change this maybe into uh, a bit more of a non-pointy object let's just go in and see if we can filter that out okay So you can see what happens as I modify this, they all modify there. Okay, so yeah, hopefully you see some sort of solution in this and there's probably 20, 30 different other stuff that you can do around this. But the bottom line is create a path, put a text on it um, or a number, then create a symbol, uh, an object, make it a symbol and copy and paste it to replace that text on the curve and then you your normal copy and paste around the, the structure okay so this for for things that are in a, a perfect um, like a circle and that sort of stuff you probably use a different technique but this is just to follow a curve and then the final thing I want to show you is that because this is a curve let me just close this character window because this is a curve if we on that curve there we can go with a node tool and remember this thing is still loose here so you can take that and reshape it and based on how we reshape it we can have all of these things moving with it okay so I can take this here let's delete that delete that okay so everything will follow that existing curve now so hopefully you will use this as a basis and then start thinking up some other creative ways of uh, utilizing this, you know, and then share it with us. So have a fantastic day and God bless.